Okay, so I'm going to be talking about B2, the long name project for which we don't yet have an acronym or cool <laughs> nickname. So <laughs> read it for yourself. Feel free to suggest any cool names. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I'll just start. So I'll go over, like, I think. Okay. I'll go over probably the whole thing, even though a lot of people have heard it already for the new people. Um, basically, what is the motivation behind the project? The motivation is that um, the blockchains that are used on a reusable re resource, such as proof of stake or proof of space, they are less secure than the ones that are used on proof of work. We know this because this has been discussed a lot in the community. We have, we, there are some known attacks, for example, long range attacks, stake building attacks. They have been studied a lot, a lot in the proof of stake setting. And basically, what we found when we were doing uh, the, the analysis of the PyCoin consensus protocol is that actually, like you can find like some very similar type of attack on a proof of stake. Maybe sometime to a lesser degree, maybe not. But basically, that's that's the motivation be behind the project. Ah. Okay, so just to give an illustration, I'm going to explain what a long-range attack is on a proof of stake system, just to make it um, easier because it's easier to resolve. So proof of stake, basically the stakeholder are the validators, they are the ones who valid, validate the block. So basically a block is validating as long as, let's say for example, there's like some threshold of signature on each block. Um, also what's going to happen usually in a sy any system is like the set of validator is going to change. So for example, here we start with like the green validator who have validated like this block and then you know they want to move to other business and we change validators and we end up with the pink validator here. Right, that's like proof of stake. Uh, now the problem with proof of stake is that what could happen is that um, basically like these validators who the green who are not part of the system anymore, um, let's say like you know they don't because they are not part of the system anymore, they don't have any incentive anymore. Maybe they have cash out their coins. Uh, maybe they don't care, and um, like an adversary would basically be able to bribe them uh, to sell their old keys at no cost because these keys they are not worth anything in the current time. So that's a problematic problematic because in the proof of stake setting, if you have the keys, you can rewrite the entire history at no cost and no time. It's not like proof of work. So that's, uh, that would be a very very unfortunate situation because then the adversary can create a chain that is as least as long if not longer than the current chain. Maybe the adversary will you know, simulate some like change of validators. Basically, it can do anything it wants with the protocol. And then what happens is that the people who have been offline for a long time, they wake up out of the blue. They see two, two chains. They both seem perfectly valid. No way to tell which one is the correct one. Um, and basically, as you can see, the only difference between these uh, two chains are the set of validators, right? Because the adversary has no way of having the pink keys. So here we will have like some orange keys. That's the only difference. Alice doesn't know who, which one are the legitimate. Even if she knew that the green one were legitimate here, like she can, at, at some point, like she cannot make the difference between valid and not valid chain. Okay, there's also another attack that's called power bleeding attack. And again, we have something similar in the proof of stake setting. And the idea behind the attack, the intuition is like the adversary can do a, para, a, a private chain, so a chain that is mine on its own. And it's because in proof of stake, like new coins are minted every block, basically it means that once the adversary does a parallel chain, it can get all the coins to itself. So then it's going to inflate its, its uh, stake in a you know, not proportional man manner. And basically the adversary could use that to also build up a really long chain. Um, here's the reference for interest. This is not uh, me who found this attack. Okay, so basically the main approach to solving the issue with proof of stake is uh, checkpointing. So um, so there are a lot of um, different papers which are based on different assumptions, different models, and the one that uh, we are focusing on, which actually you are also a co-author on, is, and, and Marco as well, is this one called BMS, which uh, basically consists in using a proof of work chain in this case, Ethereum, uh, in order to do the checkpointing. Okay, so let me um, like outline the, the solution. So we rely on a blockchain based on a, on a burnable resource, so proof of work, in order to uh, secure the proof of stake chain. So what's going to happen is that we are going to anchor the proof of stake membership um, and the proof of stake states, which are linked into the uh, blockchain. 
And in this case, we're going to use the uh, Bitcoin blockchain. So basically, this is roughly how uh, this is going to look from time to time. We're going to anchor like, the state of the blue chain, which is the proof of stake slash proof of chain, into uh, the Bitcoin chain, which is the orange chain. And the idea is that like, the Bitcoin chain, it does not suffer from this type of attacks because it's proof of work. It takes time to create blocks. Um, so, so then like, this is kind of like we're using kind of like the security of Bitcoin to secure our chain. Uh, so again, just to emphasize, but surely you know this, like the main difference between this approach and the BMS approach is that we are not relying on Ethereum because Ethereum is moving to proof of stake, in which case like there is no point doing this because proof of stake is vulnerable to the same type of attack. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it should be actually quite clear. So maybe I won't spend too much time on this. On this. Um, and yeah, and then in this case, the difficulty is uh, that in Bitcoin you don't have the same expressi expressivity pity of uh, Ethereum, so we can't really do like the approach that we did with like a smart contract where you just like send your vote because Bitcoin doesn't really is not stateful, like you don't have this type of thing. Um, okay, so I think like basically the uh, the main uh, uh, question that we're gonna have is that we need to have this. Uh, checkpoints that are pushed to the Bitcoin blockchain, blockchain like who is doing this um, this transaction, and in our case, like we want that the uh, current validator of the proof of chain do this, and uh, obviously we want to account for some adversaries, so that's why we use threshold uh, signature because something to know is like in Bitcoin we also have like multi sig which actually scale really well. But in our, in our case, that wouldn't really work well because, um, because then an adversary could just like uh, abort the whole thing by just like not contributing. We obviously need to have everyone contributing. So that's, that's one thing to understand. So multi-sig is not like scale out of n. Like basically, no, you, you can't really do k out of n. And actually, like the problem of doing this k, k out of n is the, um, like, is like you would like, how to say? The key generation basically that would be the problem. You mm -hmm. cannot have like one address uh, that could be signed by any k out of n okay. uh, subset. So you would need to do like one different address for every different k out of n subset, which actually like either you you could do it, but then imagine if you have a lot of yeah. miners that would be like super uh, inefficient, and otherwise yeah, you can you can't uh, have like one one address for k out of n. That's yeah. special basically. Um, that's Okay, so our kind of the solution. So basically, what we will have is that um, we will have, so at um, you know step I of the protocol, an aggregated key. So that's the key that corresponds to the uh, threshold signature. So basically, um, PKI will um, be the aggregated public key of all the validator in configuration I, and then. Um, what they are going to do is like this validator, they are the one who's going to push the checkpoint to the Bitcoin blockchain, right? But what we want also is that we want to account for changing validators, right? So um, basically what this uh, validator uh, associated with PKI are going to do is that when they're going to uh, push the checkpoint to Bitcoin, also they're going to transfer whatever amount they have in their keys to PKI plus one, which will be the aggregated public key of the next set of validators. So you're, you're kind of like transferring ownership of the checkpointing mechanism to the new set of validators. Um, okay, so we need the transaction to be signed by at least F plus one of the proof of stake miners, that makes sense. Um, here again, so yeah, so basically here you can see like the, the kind of like rolling state, so you have configuration I minus, minus one, so here you have the kind of like transfer for PKI minus one to PKI, uh, then, you know, here we have configuration hi, I, they do their thing. And then when we have a new set of validators, like the previous one will again transfer to the next um, validator. Um, and then the idea is that if we have Alice, uh, if we have like um, a long range attack, again, as I explained in the beginning, two, cha two chains, they look the same, then Alice, she can look at uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. We assume that she knows PK0s, PK0, and then basically, from Bitcoin, you can just like uh, follow the chain of like transactions, and basically she will be able to find the last 
like UTXO, which will give her like PKIs, the aggregated publicly of the current validator and the checkpoints. And basically using this information, she can verify which chain is the correct chain. That's, that's the, the high level idea. Um, yes, also, so, um, so something else is that basically if we want, as we said, like on the Bitcoin blockchain, we don't want to have too much data. We're going to have only a hash because it's too expensive and not efficient to have a lot of data. So what we want to do is basically include in the checkpoint that we push onto Bitcoin also a CID that any user would be able to use um, in order to retrieve the actual identities of the configuration, basically. So she can actually find who are the uh, miners and not just like validate that they are the miner in case, you know, she cannot find them. Yeah. And you would also attach a metadata so you do not have to verify from C to K0 somehow? <laughs> could you, for example, attack always C to K0 and everybody Should, would just say that? But then how would you find it? But you know PK0, but yeah, you can verify by directly checking PK500. Okay, so basically what you say is that you want to put PK0 also in the checkpoint. Just as a reference and identify. Yeah, okay, uh, okay, just so you don't have to follow the, follow the, the translation. Guy, yeah. But then how would you verify it? How would you know from each other? Yeah. Like, similar, similar 100 metric easy. How do you know, wait a minute, 100 total states metric? And each one has a different PK0. But like, uh, what? No, you, it's you know, like you the know. aggregate. Thing. This is something you know before. It's like the genesis. Where do you see it in the last transaction? Sorry? Where do you see it in the last transaction? That's what I mean. What about attaching it to the last two executions of the transaction? But the thing is, like, then anyone can attach it. Anyone who knows PK0 can attach it to their transaction, right? So you would no, need to. Because a... it needs to be signed by a proof, right? Oh, no, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It would need, so you and would need to find. So often, yeah. it's only 40 bytes. Oh, okay. So that's uh, 40 bytes for storing in the frame. There is no. Basically, you have a few chains. You start. You, you know initial which initial transaction you find initial configuration, and from that point on, you follow the few chains. No, no, I, I know. I just thought maybe you can somehow skip that if you have some little bit. But that's that, that's invisible, honestly. That, that, that in theory, if every Bitcoin transaction would be this, you would need just a simple full Bitcoin blockchain, which actually it's not much. I mean, except for the initial seed, you can do it from the other side. So, makes sense now? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so I was saying, um, initially, we were saying, oh, we can use IPFS. Uh, actually, like maybe what we're going to do is like use the um, um, K uh, KVS that uh, Alfonso is um, implementing on Udico. So actually, you can just like uh, retrieve the data from the U Udico chain itself using the CID. So that's another approach that we will use. Because it verifies against the uh, hash. It doesn't matter where you get it from, yeah. but you need to get it from somewhere. Yeah. And it's not Okay, yeah. No, no, yeah. Sorry. This is what I meant by the confirmation of the protocol can be used for this. For this, yeah, exactly. That's like right, yeah. Back when I can just offer both, uh, and you can do the same product. Okay. Yeah, so this, um, yeah, maybe we'll look a bit more deeply if you have time. So that would be that would be the idea. So yeah, hopefully we can retrieve all the data uh, using this. Um, okay, so now uh, high level protocol. So basically the protocol will be triggered uh, periodically. What we are envisioning at the moment is like, um, let's say that you know we are in a configuration, configuration I, and then we're going to trigger the protocol after like some threshold of uh, change as, as happened in the configuration. So they say we have you know like 20 new miners that I've joined or left, and we're like okay now it's time to do this. That's, that, that's how we do it. So first, the first thing that we need to do is compute the uh, aggregated publicly of the new configuration, right? PTR plus one, because only once we have this. Then we can compute the transaction that's going to, you know, transfer the ownership of the checkpointing from PKI to PKI plus one. And basically, I think that this step is kind of like the reason why you cannot do why like the. Why haven't you used sharing? Why haven't you used sharing? Sorry? Why haven't you used, why haven't you used sharing of Bitcoin Wait, we, because we have new participants now, so it's not. Because it's a good special case of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
tenure with status, with with uh, with status. I don't know about your status. Yeah, because um, like if we could, that would I would love it, but I think it's not possible with status. Okay, because uh, I last time I discussed it with Rosario. Did yeah, they're not after that. Okay. Like, okay, so then let, yeah, like honestly, if we had a way of yeah, just updating it, that that would like change our life our life a lot because this is like the most annoying <laughs> annoying part of the protocol. So yeah, if we could have a, a way to just like remove the participant that have left and then just like yeah. give a share to the new participant, that would be great. But yeah, basically, yeah. So you would kind of like. Keep or maybe update, update your chair, something like that. Idea and the high level is that instead of creating an entity where like you can say I receive the every note, you should just say do you say it here. Okay, okay. And then as things are done, you see that the same mm -hmm. out of there. Sure. Okay, well if we can do it, uh, I would be super happy. So that let's but but yeah. But well, like if people learn yeah, I think, yeah, because yeah, I did ask him, and, <laughs> and then he didn't. How do you prevent, how do you invalidate the code? You don't invalidate it, but they are no longer part of it. Like so their share would not work, I guess, their anymore. Share yeah. anymore because they're not part of the new polynomial. Okay. So their share will not create a valid, yeah. 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 That's what but it is. So you do get a new polynomial. You do get a new polynomial. You have the polynomial. So okay. you have the old polynomial, and you get a new polynomial. Ah. Yeah, the trick is that you need to you need to be sure that your shares were deleted, or you need to somehow record the transition in the in the DKG because otherwise any majority of all shares will still be able to sign. The yeah, so record. basically, yeah, they, they know that the main owner is going to participate in the little of shares because if the events then go up, ah. they're going to. But that's that's probably anyway the case, right? Okay. Because that's not our assumption. But he, even here, if you don't delete your own share and you eventually move to delete the group, you can keep it away, like there's no way around. Yeah, but the thing is that if you do that, then the transaction it has been the transaction has been spent on Bitcoin. Yeah. Ah, so okay. even if you delete it, you can drop the share there. It's a rational model, so you don't give it don't give it So the moment yeah, because basically that's the thing. Like indeed, like we could, if if someone was doing, was doing the long range attack, you know, on this key, then it doesn't matter because on the Bitcoin blockchain, once the ask yeah, is spent, you cannot spend anything more, okay. right? So yeah. that's that's the idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to, to to come back to this, yeah, like this is indeed like the biggest the biggest part and uh, the biggest problem that we have. And also, yeah, that's why you see that you can, we cannot, you know, do multi-sig or, or things like that. It's because basically this, like, PKI plus one, it needs to be known kind of like well in advance of the signing because the, like, the passing happens now. So basically at the time where the previous configuration, like, uh, you know, gives the, gives the, the key to the, to the new threshold, like, we don't know yet who's going to be honest, who's going to be online, who's going to be signing. So basically we need to commit to the whole set and then maybe that only a fraction of the set will um, will participate, but we don't know that yet. Uh, okay, so then, okay, uh, special signing, that's what happens. We use the FROST protocol because it's like the most efficient one. We send the transaction to the Bitcoin, so basically that's kind of like the high level. So nothing, nothing too complex, but uh, difficult to scale because of, of that. Um, okay. Okay, so that's kind of like one slide summarizing summary it's all. Um, I think we're good. Okay. Um, no, for the for the for the DKG, no, you don't need it. Like I know, yeah, it's kind of like everyone is the dealer for their own secret key, and sure, which we don't do right now. So yeah, that's that's really and actually, initially the signing, like the first protocol, actually you do need a dealer, but it, but you can remove it basically. So we have removed it. So during the signing, you kind of like everyone can choose their own shares, send it, and everyone can repeat the transaction using the share, the share uh, But the signing, on the other hand, and that's kind of like a problem. It's like it's not, 
like robust to failure. So basically, if someone does not uh, extend their share, we need to have a timeout, remove them from, from the protocol, they're offline, they're malicious or something, and redo the protocol without them. And because we have signing, we can redo the protocol without them. That's kind of like a like So it's just too long. Um, so the way trust work actually is that everyone at the at the beginning everyone generates their own kind of like randomness and commits them and then you would take this basically and depending on this and then depending on the set of signer you will take the randomness of just the signer no, and that, that's why it's not so fast because it's fast for me to get out of the set and, and, and you have yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, well, um, yeah, I know you can't. That's yeah, why, yeah. That's why. Why, why? Yeah, okay. So that's that's why I guess because, and I guess that's why spots are maybe more uh, efficient than others because you have this kind of like pre-processing one where everyone creates their randomness and posts it, and then you use this for your like okay. thing. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. So I think otherwise, like the other alternative, indeed, if you wanted kind of like robustness, then you would need to have maybe like there there was another protocol that was robust but then less efficient. So we decided to go with Frost, um, which is less robust but more efficient. Kind of the optimistic stage. Okay. Um, okay, so that's um, that's the uh, like side so summarizing. Um, okay, so now about the implementation. So basically uh, we had this team from that that was working on this. And what they did is like they um, basically implemented the DKG and the checkpoint thing using uh, a library. But the problem is like uh, what they have done so far is like not robust to failure. So they haven't handled the case where, as I just said, like if someone doesn't participate, we just need to redo the sign without them. And also, even the DKG, they haven't implemented the one that we wanted that is robust. Um, also, they only had the option to add new participants and to not remove them. Uh, and other than this, uh, the check so the checkpoints were created and pushed to the Bitcoin rec test using Taproot that was working well. Uh, we have a Kubernetes development of 20 nodes that I wanted to show you, but at the moment my internet was not working, so we'll see if we can stop it. Maybe I can show uh, it to you. Um, and basically, since they have left me with this, I have kind of like started in implementing like minor improvements on the code, um, especially one of the issues that uh i had with their code is that the dkg checkpointing is like kind of like done separately from musical so um, i started kind of like implementing like merging the two a bit more like adding some states related to the checkpointing in some of the musical actor um with a bit of also help i've also and basically like uh, doing this helped me with um, um the functionality of removing a minor so this i started doing uh, okay, so demo as I said, works the Ascaria. Uh, basically, so my next step for now, uh, mostly I'm going to focus on the implementation and on uh, cleaning the code because it wasn't really clean and basically um, yeah, finishing it. Like improving this, uh, what we want to have also for the next demo, which is in March, is uh, use Bitcoin test set instead of Bitcoin rec test, um, which will be a destinizer, but then basically because like Bitcoin testnet is associated with like some like testnet code, it's going to be a bit tricky to especially to um, make like the initial funding transaction. Um, maybe we'll need to like maintain state. Like we'll see, but it's going to be a bit more tricky. But uh, we we are hoping to, to have this soon uh, before March. Also, as I said, we at the uh, yeah, at the moment we are pushing the transaction to like a centralized like mini mini server. We want to not do this and use uh, our yeah, yeah, I yeah, 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 so Marco this morning he started mentioning this problem that um, when you know when we do this 
protocol, we need to take into account weight, right? And by weight, I mean in proof of stake, it will be the number of coins, and in proof of stake, it will be like the amount of storage. And basically, like at the moment, we don't have a way, as you were asking, we don't have a way to do this threshold. So the only way to do this is like to have one cheaper unit of stake. And then we end up with like a lot of this. So already we don't have a, an efficient algorithm, and we, now we, we need to take it into account. This is super inefficient. Um, and yes, yeah, so basically the problem of that asynchronous uh, DKG that is compatible with Bitcoin, that's an open problem. As you said, like, we have BNS and stuff like this that are like, much more efficient, but, uh, but Bitcoin doesn't allow us to, to see. So we have, yeah? That, that's a DKG you need to be asynchronous if you already solve the problem of compatibility. Can you use it for solving mm -hmm. for, for main concerns to help you with? Yeah. You just post something encrypted on the blockchain. No, yeah, but that, no, that's the thing. Like you can, oh yeah, that, that, yeah, you, you cannot do this. But like, yeah, what I mean is like um, by asynchronous, like you need to have some interaction between the the miners. You cannot just like do your part and put it on the Udico, um like you know, just compute your own share and put it on the on the Udico, like blockchain. Was this what, what you were asking? No, well, it was not as simple as that. I but mean, some other leverage it to solve the order of whatever. If you need to send something to all, you should be. And you post it on the. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but then still, like, you have, like, uh, you need, like, you have n square message because you need to have, like, a, a message for every party. Yeah. So, so, so you can't have so, a signature. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah but we don't understand what that does, but I think it's easy. It's fun to really click. But I would really recommend it, like, not to do everything you think. No, I'm sorry. It's the state of the art thing. And ah. I don't think that we need to go to that one. So, yeah, I mean, no. I like, yeah, it's active area of research, okay? We, we don't know how to do it well. We don't understand why you're wrapping up points of this because like, if you hit the wall, it's probably understand at which scale you hit the wall. Yeah. You need it, you know, for something else, how much QRP to get the attention yeah, to yeah. the problem. We come back to this at some point, but you need to come to know that. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, well, yeah, uh, uh, as of today, like, um, like long term problem. So open. What, what would you say to precisely how much amount of QR is? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I think that's very good. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, well, I yeah, I can just say quickly like a, a number of ideas that we have thought about, but that um, yeah, would either require long term research or that didn't work. We thought about doing some kind of like hierarchical signing, so think about what we are doing with the consensus, but do the same like with. Signing, like have just like subnets that do the signing and then kind of like combine all of the signing together. But again, because of the interactions that are uh, necessary for the DKG, that's actually like really painful to do this because then you would, you would need to have kind of like subnets interacting with subnets, which then becomes like super um, complex. Um, also, like, like we have some kind of like small improvement that we actually probably will implement. So first we can use like Bitcoin kind of like nat native noticing um, functionality so it's just like you know you let's say it doesn't like let's say you have like five keys and you just require like three out of this like five keys to sign then you know we could use that and just like subdivide the the whole committee into five different groups and you know just like parallelize this but like but each group would have to have a sorry <laughs> okay so why is it just one of you so each group would have to have an honest majority yeah, yes, uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, basically. Yeah. So, so probability so, with it usually doesn't work out. No, the thing is like basically I think you you can work out what like I did it but I don't remember the, the numbers. Like if you do some kind of like um you need to just work out like the threshold that you need to have. Maybe it's gonna be more than two thirds. But yeah, we, yeah, you need to have like a threshold for each group, definitely. Uh you you need to find out like how much the adversary can have in one group, and then you need to have that plus one in each group. And, and, and having having them, it, it, it decreases exponentially the number of groups. No, but the, like that's the problem. The problem is that we cannot like with this solution, we cannot have more than five groups because anyway, like in Bitcoin, like it's 
then if you want to have like more than five sign signature, it's going to be three. So, so it, it doesn't scale very well. I honestly thought we were going to uh, see Frank as uh, one of the first the body type of the character with no sign to it, it's almost weird. Yeah, uh, so the thing is, I think you could use something, I, I'm totally not, never did a deep dive into this in the uh, but something possible is that, you know, if I, as a miner, I have 1% and hence I have 1% of the share, but yeah. a lot of shares, then I should do something on my own. That's the first assignment. I don't know how it's, it's not okay or not for me to do. That is the thing, like, we can see. So I think it's easy, like, yeah. I shouldn't give one share of that, I give 1% of all shares, so assign it on my own. But the DPT, I don't know. So there are some super nice Like have some kind of like private something where you know for yourself if you are 
elected, but someone external so not know. But then, like, you could still argue that you could have some type of like bribery attack, anything like that, where you could still manage to like corrupt the. How would that So that's the. There was some idea about using like ring signatures to do this, which was a bit of a pain. Like basically, we don't we don't know if it was an idea by Nicolas. We don't know if it's going to work or not, but the idea was to kind of like use ring signature such that you didn't know which participant was elected, only they knew from their self, and you, you would use the ring signature to verify that uh, indeed the final signature comes from a legitimate participant. And then the advantage is that even though like the sample is determined in advance, at least it's not perfect. So it's So, yeah. That's, uh, that's, uh, that was, yeah. There was a lot of ideas. <laughs> that was, none of them were like great, but, um, but yeah. Yeah. No, that's. Uh, so, do you want me to go now? Or to, yeah, the, the, so, yeah, so last one to Babylon. Uh, so, yeah, very recent paper by the Stanford group. So, basically, what they have is that also they use proof of work in order to secure proof of stake, but they don't use the Bitcoin chain. What they do is like they use um, like their own proof of work chain, but that is like merge mine with Bitcoin. So, the idea is like you don't need to, like, you can reuse some of that, of that power. Uh, so, so, reuse some of that security. And then what they have is that actually they use the proof of work chain as kind of like a time stamping like service. So what it means is that um, like let's say like there's one proof of stake uh, block that is mined, then any miner can just like send the checkpoint to the Babylon chain and then it will be added. So you don't need to have like a majority voting or anything, only like one miner can do this. So then obviously what can happen is that if there is a fork, then you could have like two legitimate blocks. Two, two blocks that are checkpoints on the Babylon chain, even though they are conflicting. And what they say is that in this case, um, Babylon is like the time stamping. So basically, the first one that was included in Babylon is the correct one. So you would use this as kind of like a way to differentiate between two systems. So that's, um, yeah, that's so this. And also, you, they use it for like slashing against. Um, like misbehaving, they also include like censorship and stalling attacks. So they also use it as kind of like a, a fail safe mechanism in the sense that if you don't have any censorship or stalling attacks, then you don't need Babylon for this. But then if there is like a censorship or stalling attack, then you can use Babylon in order to slash the minor for misbehaving. So it's, um, yeah, that's, so yeah, that's super useful. And I think like the main, yeah, the main difference from comes from using this like merge mining. Um, so that's the thing because also like for me it's not like yeah maybe we need to touch it and it's not really clear for me who would be like merge mining because clearly the Bitcoin miner like they are you know so you think but, but the thing okay but the thing is like yeah. they have no yeah that's but they have work to do on top like it's on yeah, the that's why I think it's to be like, from current, yeah. So maybe some of the proof of stake only, yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, and then they don't have any issue with scalability because, as I said, like, you only need one person to just switch your transaction to, to, to the Babylon. So that's, that's another interesting, interesting thing. So maybe it will be interesting to me. Did you end up reaching out to them already? Or? No, because actually I was finishing reading it yesterday yeah. in the plane, so. <laughs> it I makes sense to read before asking. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So I wanted to read it, but now that I've read it, I will email them. Yeah, 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 because also, yeah, we, we want to clarify about that. Like, so I'll, I'll email them this week and, and we'll see. But that's, yeah, but that's just a new, new work. Yeah, so basically that's, uh, I don't know, I don't know the size. Okay, it is. Um, yeah, so I don't know if anyone, so I guess some people have seen it, but if some people are interested in the demo, maybe I can see if I can make it work at some point during the week and I can uh, show you. But anyway, we'll do some maybe hacking with Alfonso. So even maybe if I can fix some stuff, I can show you the latest demo. So, um, well, I mean, you didn't make it possible. 
I'll, I'll, I'll have a, if, if I can connect to the internet, yeah. like they definitely support, uh, but otherwise. I mean, you can not go to this Oh, yeah, actually, you have. Because we're doing it in EC2 anyway. The only thing I don't have installed is Linux, but you know. Okay. My family has a big data plan on my phone, so maybe you can have to do that. Yes, but I don't know about you. Maybe it's super expensive because we're in the back. I didn't Everyone know. had one except us. What? Yeah, yes. but they're wrong with how it's for 24 hours after you activate them, so. Ah, we do it still. So they give you like a SIM card that one day or one time? Yeah, they sweep it inside your passport and give it to you, yeah. except for the two of you, it seems. Oh my <laughs> god, I felt so rejected. Oh. You also did not get one. Actually, both one, I got like 17. Yeah, so you can do that. But yeah. Uh, actually, it's maybe enough. Yeah. Right, then just so you know that you. No, we just. Uh, you just need to connect to the EC2 and then you can just tell. I, I need to works. first, yeah. But why can't you do it? Oh, no, she's having internet. No, because just my, my no. internet was not connecting. Uh, right, you can go to the internet. To the internet, but it's fine now. Now I can say, I mean, I'm gonna restart my machine, it's gonna take a few minutes to start anyway, and then I can. Oh, so you're a virtual machine now. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Next took several minutes to restart mm -hmm. that. No, <laughs> that would be yeah. problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You should do the power allowance then. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 70 minutes. <laughs> then 20. Yeah. Yeah. You're killing your productivity. Yes. Yeah, I'm just getting the data plan. Okay, well, yeah. otherwise, for. For now, for now, I'm, 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 I think it's fine now. I think I'm. You should use Marcos data plan because then you can expand it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can expand it anyway. That's that's why. Yeah. 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 I, I wonder why it take time to download it because it's like 80 bucks and I'm spending like more like 40 bucks to do it. Are you gonna spend more than 10 gigabytes in a week? Though? No, this is what I bought. So I was giving. Yeah, that's right. Until Sarah comes.